there's one other thing, and you may or may not want to go on, go and talk about this, but I know um, of doctors in Europe who are doing a new, we're back to HIV and AIDS now and treatments, ARVs in particular, um, because I recently went back on the ARVs three months ago or in May. Um, and and had friends in Germany and other places telling me about a new way of dealing with these drugs that is less toxic, and that is low-dose uh, boosted monotherapy with a protease inhibitor. And I don't, I'm not asking you for any kind of recommendations or medical advice, but most of these doctors can't can't speak out yet. And I know you work with doctors. Are you are you? Willing to talk about um, this Presista at half dose or low doses with MAF being um, able to do what the other ARV combos are doing, and if you're not, no. Well, uh, well, let's see. Uh, we're still. Uh, it is still too early to talk about uh, the MAF 314 in this context, but we can we can talk a little bit about protease inhibitors and the so-called monotherapy. This is something there's studies published out there. Yes, there are trials being can... done on persistent boosted. Okay, let's uh, let's start from the beginning. I personally like protease inhibitors a lot because my very first paper that was published in 1984 with Nobel laureate Sir John Bain was on protease inhibitors. At that time, I was working at Barrows Welcome in Research Triangle Park in North Carolina. And guess what? In the corridor next to my laboratory, not my laboratory, it was a, a young postdoc, but in the corridor next to the laboratory where I worked, they were developing AZT. That was 1984. In our laboratory, we were working on protease inhibitors for other purposes, for uh, cardiovascular drugs, drugs for uh, like uh, anti-aggregant drugs, but I was working on protease inhibitors, so this is a kind of molecules that uh, I've been studying now for several years. And uh, it was with great pleasure that I discovered that uh, one of the most common molecules used as a protease inhibitor in HIV infection is Darunavir, also commercial name is Prezista. What does Darunavir mean? It means Dr. Aruna, and the name sounds kind of Indian. Uh, I don't want to sound too new age. Anyway, the Darunavir is the closest to a natural remedy that you can think of, because it has been produced in the laboratory, of course, but it has been designed bearing in mind how natural protease inhibitors work. If you read the original paper describing the synthesis of the runavir, you can clearly read these words. In designing this molecule, we were inspired by the natural protease inhibitors and the way and how is their active site designed by nature. So we designed a product according to the laws of nature, the way they work. Why? Because, uh, you know, it is uh, very difficult to find the proper herbs that contains the fungi that produce those protease inhibitors, so it is easier to design those molecules in the laboratory nowadays. So we can say that the runavir even though it's not a natural product, you don't find it on the field, is the closest that it can be to a natural product. And this is something reassuring. And according to the ministry guidelines for AIDS treatment, Darunavir or Prezista can be used in monotherapy in a number of indications. So this is already uh, written that you can use it alone or together with Norvir. But Norvir, it, it is in itself a protease inhibitor, but only serves uh, to uh, decrease uh, the catabolism of the runavir so that you can lower the dosage. So there are many, many trials going on 
some of them already published, another in progress, that demonstrate that you can control HIV infection, and now I'm talking as a pure orthodox doctor, you can control HIV infection, you can zero the viral load, you can increase the CD4 with the runavir alone. Then there is uh, the question of the dosage. And I see that many doctors try to check which is the minimally effective dosage. And so this is a very empirical way of going. Some doctors, they just uh, adjust the dosage according to the patient. Many times it's the other way around. The patient adjusts the dose, and if and when the patient tells the doctor that he has adjusted the dose, and the doctor says that the effect is there, the doctor says, well, good, good to learn that also this dosage, it is effective. Goodness, doctors in Europe are much different than doctors in America, too, because Maybe. doctors here would say, you're fired, I don't want to be your doctor anymore. No, the, you know, we have a public health system that has a lot of shortcomings, a lot of defects, but uh, uh, some doctors in the infectious disease department with whom I collaborate, uh, they say, I'm not a drug dealer. If you decide not to take drugs, you sti you're still here under my supervision. So it's up to you, we decide together, that's the best way. And uh, but even if you decide not to take drugs, you are not fired. You still you are still here. You are still taken care of. So many times it happens. Uh, of course, you will never see this uh, written. But many times it happens that the patient decreases the dose. And if the patient has a good uh, relationship with the doctor, at some point in time, will tell the doctor, uh, and uh, the doctor will accept, and the doctor will learn that even with reduced dosage. But then, you know, reduced in comparison to what? The guidelines, of course, they are generic. So it's a trying and error uh, approach, and I know that it is, this is very much uh, followed. Now, let's go from Prezista, which is effective with less side effects than any other um, antiretroviral drugs close to a natural remedy, together with other, let's call them, nutritional approaches. You could talk about uh, vitamin C, you could talk about probiotics. The attitude of the doctors in Europe is the following. We monitor you. If, yours, if your CD4s are above a certain threshold and remain stable, if your viral load is below 100,000 copies, that for us is irrelevant, then we don't give you any therapy. Whatever you do to keep your CD4 up and your viral load down is not of our interest. You want to take probiotics, you want to take vitamin C, you want to take whatever type of supplement comes in your mind, go ahead, fine, that's fine for us. Let's monitor your condition, and as long as your condition is like this, we don't give you drugs. If we see that your CD4s are declining, your viral load is increasing, then we start with some drugs, and we decide together, according to side effects, according to this and that. So that's the approach they have. Mm. And in many instances, people are able to keep their CD4 up with different strategies, including, including natural food interventions, as the Canadian call this approach. I like this. So that's the way it goes. And uh, we, have, we have observed this in Italy, in Austria, in Germany. And uh, this is a very common approach.